All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahashai, or Rachak Vadash, which Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's true name. Yahweh Shai is from the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, it's his true name. And Rachak Vadash is the Holy Spirit. And I'm also going to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who rule and teach well in the scriptures. And salutations to all the brothers out there who are pushing this truth. And um, in all sincerity, all right, and with charity. And um, basically, I just want to go into how, um, you know, you got to fear Yahweh Bashim Shai, And it's a fearful thing to ha uh, fall into the hands of the living power, which we'll get that scripture in a moment. And uh, on screen, which, uh, you know, a lot of you older brothers know who that is, all right, to the left. But for you uh, younger brothers who don't know, this was a former... GMS Chicago um, member, okay, and he was uh, actually in a high position in this camp at one point, but, you know, due to rebellion this, he uh, was casted out, and pretty much he, um, you know, uh, uh, let those uh, demons play on him, all right, he gave in to those demons, he didn't care, you know, what, you know, what was being said to him, all right, and, um, you know, he came out with so many wayward doctrines, okay? All right, this man changed up so much stuff. I mean, from, you know, America not being, you know, Babylon the Great, it's the Vatican, to you don't have to follow, you know, men. You know, the Spirit teaches you to, um, um, you can smoke, you know, basically, okay? To I'm trying to think. There's so much. Oh, you don't have to. To teach every week You know, all these things, alright Basically, like I said, just being a straight rebel And, um You know, look at him now, okay This guy's through Alright, look at him, let's zoom in on him Alright, looks like he's smoking a Cuban Alright, thinking, you know, he, he he's all good Alright, but the Lord, he's about to deal with this man Eventually, you know Right now, the Lord, he's allowing him to continue in his wickedness To really be an example, okay Because, you know for us who are in the truth, you know, you see something like this, and this should put fear in you, all right? And when I saw this, um, this photo, uh, a brother sent it to me, you know, that, that made me fear you, how about Shimei al Shai, you know, because at one point, this man actually had the spirit on him, okay? And you know what? Let me get an example, all right? Because in the scriptures, okay, it talks about how Saul, okay, um, Salaki, how Saul, he had um, an evil spirit hop on him. All right. Um, here we go. Hold on. Is this the one I wanted? But it talks about how basically, yeah, you know what? That's it right there. You know, evil spirit was put on Saul, okay? And that can happen to, to any of us at any moment if the Lord wants that to happen, okay? It could be in our, um, in our story, all right? And that's why we got to pray that Psalms, what is it, um, I think it's the 51st uh, chapter, okay? Psalms, the 51st chapter, it talks about how uh, King David said this, uh, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And when you think about it, the reason why King David said that is because he saw what happened to King Saul, okay? He saw how, you know, he, the, the Spirit was with him at one point and how it vanished from him. And that's a very, very scary thing, so... You know, for us brothers, we, we got to constantly pray that this doesn't happen. That we don't be like guys like this, okay? All right? You know, we pray that we're not guys like this. You see? You know, because this can happen to any of us, you know? The, the Lord can allow it. He can um, sanction it, okay? But let me get this. This is uh, 1 Samuel 16 and 14. It says, But the Spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, departed from Saul. You see? The Spirit of Yahweh departed from Saul. And that's what happened to Nazariah, okay? That guy, or if you don't know his name, that's Nazariah. All right? And that dude's just been a rebel for, what, like five years now? Something like that? Four or five years? I don't even remember when he got kicked out. It's been so long ago. Might even be going on six years now. But, uh, yeah, he, um... He's just been, you know, rebellious for, for this whole time. The Lord took that spear from him. 
And he, and he had a heavy spear when he was in our camp. Okay? Now, I learned under him at one point. No? He was a, a, a teacher of mine. Okay? You see? The Lord can use people. That, that's why it's so... Um, that's why you got to fear you how about Shemel Shai. Because, look, the Lord can use you to teach, you know, a, a group for a while. And then you can get casted out. And the Lord can keep that new fruit. You know? It can happen to anybody. All right? But it says, But the Spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. You see, then the evil spirit came. The Lord sent that lying spirit. Okay? That's what happens. The Lord can do that, you know, very quickly. All right? And you don't want that to happen. That's why you got to remain meek, humble. You have to, you know, follow orders. You know, if you're elders, because that's what his problem was. He never wanted to follow orders, okay, from the, uh, the, the heads of our camp. He always, you know, bucked up against them. And that's why the Lord casted him out. I mean, there was other reasons, too. You know, he was teaching, he was starting to teach, uh, uh, you know, the doctrine of Dan. All right. He was bringing that into the, you know, into the equation. You know, he was also being, uh, you know, not brotherly. Okay. You know, there was so many uh, different reasons why the Lord casted him out. All right. But one of the main reasons, though, was uh, the fact that he was a, a rebellious son. You know, a, a rebellious spiritual son. Okay. And it says, And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from the Most High troubleth thee. And that's what we see. We see how that, uh, these evil spirits are troubling Nazariah. We can see it from far. We've been seeing it for years. Okay. You know, this is just another example. Another example. You know? It says this guy's sitting there. All right? You know, smoking a, a damn Cuban. All right? With some random cat. I don't even know who the hell this guy is. All right? Somebody that's not in the truth who thinks he's in the truth. Okay? <laughs> and it says here, Be at peace with all men if possible. Beautiful build, beloved, with... Muhammad Jersey, I fucks with you, like, hey man, this, look, there's only one truth, okay, one doctrine, the scriptures talk about how, how can two walk together if they be agreed, you see, these guys are in agreement, all right, it was something, and that's why they can sit there and deal with each other, if you're really about this truth, look, you're going to separate yourself from um, anyone that's against you, how about Shemi al and the true doctrine, okay, you're not going to deal with them like that, all right, not gonna, you know, buddy, you know, be buddy buddy with you know these people. You're gonna be vexed being around these individuals. You know, you you don't want to be. You know what the thing is with this guy is he wants to be loved by the world, and it's like, look, if you're in this truth, you're not gonna be loved by this current world. All right. Hey, but look, this current world is about to bypass. So why would you want to be in league with it? You know. Hey, but it is what it is. You know. But uh, from there. Let's just hop into this uh, Hebrews 10 and 31. It says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. And it is a fearful thing. Because the Lord can do anything to you. The Lord can kill you right away. The Lord can prolong your death. The Lord can um, make you uh, suffer. And that's what I believe what's going to happen to this guy. Alright? I believe that's what's going to happen to him. The Lord is going to make him suffer. When... Uh, Great uh, uh, perils come, the trials and tribulations, you know, all, all the hardships, all right, you know, because this guy, he, he, he's been, he, he hasn't been touched yet, and there's a reason, you know, like I said earlier, it's, you know, one, I believe, you know, the reason why the Lord is doing this is to um, have him, uh, 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 you know, be that example, but also, you know, the Lord's going to punish him in the end. Okay? And harshly too. Because you can't just sit there and think nothing's going to happen to you after you change the doctrine. Okay? After you, you know, have been a rebel. You know, you slandered brothers. Okay? You know, you've, you've done all these, like, wicked acts. The Lord's not going to, you know, allow you to get away scot-free, so to speak. Okay? It ain't going to happen. You know? Let me get this, uh... In the book of Sirach, real quick. 
All right. This is Sirach, um, the tenth chapter, and we'll start at the seventh verse, and we'll go down, jump down a couple verses as well. But let's get this first. Sirach ten and seven. Pride is hateful before the Most High, man, and both do with one commit iniquity. So the Most High hates pride. All right, and so does a uh, man. And that guy, he he has it. It's written all over him. All right, if you've ever been around him, you you know. Okay, you know. All right, now I'm going to keep going. And the beginning of pride is when one departeth from the Most High and his heart is turned away from his Maker. And that's what's, uh, what's happened to Nazariah, okay? All right, he, he's departed from the Most High. He's not following in the ways of Yahweh Bashem Shai, okay? Look, the Lord gave us the, the blueprint. It's very easy and simple to understand, all right? Well, really, for the righteous. What does it say now? I think Sirach, I think uh, the 30... Is it the 33rd chapter? Maybe the 39th chapter? It talks about how basically to the righteous, it's simple and plain. But unto the wicked, all right, it's stumbling blocks, all right? See, this truth is very simple. It's not, it's not hard. Very basic, you know. It's actually really, uh, it's pretty much ABC 1, 2, 3. You know? See, this world that we live in, this is a complex and complicated world. Hey, the, the brother Mariala made a, a point, kind of stuck with me. He said, it's actually hard to do wickedness when you really think about it. All right? You got to go all, out of your way. You got to you gotta plan, scheme, do all these things. But if you're be, uh, being righteous, it's very simple. Straight, forward, clean cut, man. You know? All right? I'm going to keep reading. For pride is the beginning of sin. All right, and it says, "And he that hath it shall pour out, uh, pour out abomination." And, and that's how right for pride is the beginning of sin because when you when you're prideful, you basically believe that whatever you say, whatever you feel, the things that um, that you believe in are correct. Your philosophies and ideologies. All right, and then when you depart from the Most High and His ways, you do what now? You uh, transgress uh, the law, okay? You, meaning you break the law. You sin now, okay? You sin. That's what these guys do. And, and this guy has porn on abominations, man, all right? Because he was prideful. And what are some of his abominations? I mentioned it earlier. This guy's talking about the tribe of Dan is a part of the 144,000. All right, that was one of the first things, all right, that came out of his mouth that was just... You know, completely off. Like I said, uh, what do you have? Uh, uh, the Vatican is Babylon. You know, you don't have to follow teachers or man. What else? I mean, there's so many things, man. And this guy, I, you know, I, there's a, a list of things. Okay. You know, that's all abominations, man. All abominations. I'm gonna keep reading. And therefore, the Lord brought upon them, upon them, strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. And that's what's about to happen. The Lord is about to, you know, bring strange calamities upon him. Okay. You know, his family may get, you know, uh, injured or destroyed. Okay. He might start, you know, feeling. Um, uh, he might start, you know, ha having a, uh, you know, um, what do you call that? Uh, you know, uh, bodily ailments, okay? Hey, the Lord may make him survive all these, you know, horrific things, you know, the, the wars, you know, the, the, the cannibalism, the famines. He may make him survive all that to, to, to uh, ultimately destroy him with a missile. Who knows, man? All I know is that this guy's, you know, his story's not going to end well, okay? All right? And like I say, you know, he's an example to us, you know, who are in this faith, of how not to be. All right, Akim. So pretty much that's it. You know, just you know, just don't be like this guy, okay? You know, don't be like Nazariah, man. This guy is uh, a demon, okay? You know, he, he he's gonna sit there and push all this madness, you know, out there, and you know, just you know, don't listen to him, man. All right, this guy has nothing good, you know, coming out of his mouth. All right. You know, and, and you know, remain you know meek, humble, 
They follow, you know, your uh, elders, whomever they may be. Just be in order. And, you know, continue to, you know, serve your Hawa Ba'ashim Yashai properly. All right? And, you know, with that, I'm going to, um, you know, end this lesson. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to you, Hawa Ba'ashim Yashai. Also, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to all you brothers out there. You know, keep pushing. You know, and, uh, you know, just be patient. All right? We're going to get out of this captivity soon. Shalom.